General Motors, Ford Motor Company and Chrysler Corporation are known as the big three automakers in the United States. But one iconic character did miracles with the two of them. Any guesses on which two we are talking about? Well, though we don't have our own Mustang to drive down history, you can always take the front seat by joining us right here. Hint. Yes, you guessed it right. In 1924, Lido Anthony Iacocca was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania. He attended Allen High School, graduated with a degree in industrial engineering from Lehigh University, and to top it off, graduated with a master's degree in mechanical engineering from Princeton University in 1946. In the same year, Lee found employment at Ford, where he began his career as an engineering trainee and later moved to sales and marketing, which he loves. His journey climbing the ladder at Ford was swift. He was soon promoted to assistant sales manager. Here, he made a campaign, 56 for 56, where he sold 1956 model year cars with a 20% down payment and a rest to be paid monthly for three years at $56. For this, Lee gained attention. It was one promotion after the other. In 1960, Lee was offered the position of vice president and general manager where he worked on the company's racing program. A series of promotions later, he was the executive vice president in 1967. Lee contributed immensely to Ford and became a household name in the auto industry by contributing to the design of the Ford Mustang, his signature project. It became so famous that Time and Newsweek magazines both featured Lee and the Mustang on their covers in the same week. The Ford Mustang was introduced to the public at the 1964 World's Fair. The Mustang was an instant hit, inspiring the American muscle car trend and is still produced today. He was chosen as the company's president 26 years later. Despite his success at Ford, Henry Ford II, Henry Ford's grandson, abruptly sacked Iacocca in 1978 after 32 years of service, telling him that, sometimes you just don't like somebody, according to Iacocca's book and autobiography. He was hired by Chrysler in a month and became CEO in a year. At the time, the company was in desperate financial trouble and was on the verge of bankruptcy and shutdown. To save the dying company, Iacocca managed to convince Washington to save it with $1.5 billion in federal loans. There was no such federal financial aid provided to a private entity ever. This was a first. This period was often referred to as the 1979 Chrysler bailout. Lee shut down all non-profitable operations, unfortunately, resulting in employees being laid off or reduced salaries. He also agreed to accept a personal salary of just $1 annually. Lee went big on advertising. He changed the concept of it, often including himself on the screen. He was in 61 Chrysler commercials. He tells viewers in one of his commercials, if you can find a better car, buy it. Oh, one more thing. If you can find a better car, buy it. Soon, Lee became the face of the brand, which is a technique followed by most CEOs in today's era. I have one and only one ambition for Chrysler, to be the best. He restored Chrysler's profitability and returned every dollar the company owned to the government seven years early. He placed a strong focus on quality. He constantly began searching for possibilities for improvement by extending warranties and lowering costs. Roughly three years after, Chrysler slowly began lifting its head from where it once laid collapsed, peaking at a brighter future. When the company came back on its feet, Lee made $20 million. Another three years later, guided by Lee, there it was, the Chrysler became one of the big three. Your legacy should be that you made it better than it was when you got it. Lee Iacocca's pursuit of new models changed the playing field for Detroit's Big Three. Lee began taking up projects that Henry Ford II had strongly rejected. The once rejected projects shook the industry with a boom and a bam. A series of minivans were manufactured. He gave birth to the Dodge Caravan, the first minivan in the world, 
and the Plymouth Voyager, two of the most adaptable wagons ever created in America. Plymouth Voyager. They're the most versatile wagons ever built in America. There's nothing like them. He engineered the takeover and eventual demise of number four automaker, American Motor Company, so he could add AMC's Jeep brand to Chrysler's lineup. We are continually faced with great opportunities brilliantly disguised as insoluble problems. I hire people brighter than me and then I get out of their way. He knew how to include his workforce in the business. I have found that being honest is the best technique I can use. Right up front, tell people what you're trying to accomplish and what you're willing to sacrifice to accomplish it. The mnemonic phrase, I am chairman of Chrysler Corporation always, was frequently used by Chrysler employees who needed to remember the chairman's last name spelt correctly. No doubt he was extremely successful, but he did have failures too. The Ford Pinto fuel tanks began exploding, resulting in flames bursting out. The safety of owning a Ford Pinto was questionable. The company had to recall the Pinto from the market and safety measures were installed. You don't win them all. Being eager, vigilant, encouraging and cheerful at the same time were a few of his characteristics both at Ford and at Chrysler. He was a hero, a role model to many. Lee was ranked as the nation's third most admired person in a 1985 Gallup poll. Harvard Business Review refers to Lee as the first modern example of a charismatic business leader. In 2009, an automobile, a 45th anniversary special edition Mustang, was named for Lee Iacocca. At the age of 94 years, the man behind the Ford Mustang and the minivan had accumulated a net worth of $150 million. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.